everything is stressed. Victoria also has the unique situation of a very a great entertainment related to tennis. While it's important for the business world, there's a lot of movement and that's an ideal circumstance for the virus to transmit, further compromising a distressed system. With respect to staffing, it's pointless to cancel everybody's leave and then everybody's just sitting around playing cards or tiddlywinks. There needs to be a coordinated approach, so different services may be undertaken at different elements, but there is no value whatsoever in just cancelling people's leave because suddenly this power is available. AMA Victoria has great confidence in the executive uh, in the Department of Health. We've had long conversations about planning ahead and look forward to assisting, as do all healthcare workers, I, I expect, uh, to getting all Victorians and ultimately this is going to translate to all Australians through this, what will be short lived crisis, we will get through it. But unfortunately, we have to consider we're on a war footing and there are going to be casualties. The situation in Victoria, we've got uh, severe shortages, over 4,000 healthcare workers unavailable, everyone's exhausted, the workload crippling. The decision to go to Code Brown isn't a light one, is it? No, it's not. And it's a fair indication of just how serious everything is. So we've been hearing, uh, certainly in Victoria, for the best part of six weeks, how every element of the healthcare system, particularly in the public sector, is at crisis. It's waiting for triple zero to be answered. It's ambulances to arrive, to get you unloaded in an emergency department, the emergency department to be able to dispatch you either safely home or to a level of care in the community. It may be a general practitioner who themselves are exhausted or ward or indeed an intensive care unit. Uh, you just presented in your news headlines, substantial deaths as a result of COVID-19. In Victoria, we have the equivalent of three major, the big public hospitals full of nothing but COVID-19 patients. And part of the background to everything is, as you stated accurately, the staff are exhausted. They're mentally fatigued because they know they're not able to provide the high level of standard of care they want to and know they could have in ideal circumstances. And we just want to have an opportunity to get a sensible, uh, centrally coordinated delivery of services. There's high demand. Uh, we have to cover emergencies from all areas of medicine and we need to look after the COVID-19 patients. So deferring non-urgent services and asking staff to, uh, or talking to them about cancelling their planned leave. This measure of Code Brown, it's usually reserved for short-term emergencies, such as a train accident, for example. Do mm. you believe that the situation that we're seeing in hospitals at the moment is short-term? Uh, well, it depends on your time frame. So it's going to be shorter rather than longer. I've seen expressions of in the order of four weeks, which is going to take us up to Valentine's Day, six weeks to the 1st of March. And uh, it may well go all the way up to Easter, which is going to occupy the first term of public schooling. So it remains an unknown feast. There's a clear optimism bias and, and in short, she'll be right, we'll manage. And I can assure everybody, certainly your Victorian viewers, that the healthcare system will provide what they can do with resources available. Those resources are all fully stretched. Everybody's doing the best that they can. And of course, everybody is going to be frustrated on both sides of the patient and uh, practitioner equation. And everybody just needs to be very tolerant and nice to one another. The real difficulty is the ability to provide even emergency care. Uh, don't forget in Victoria, particularly maybe in the Western districts, we could have a grass fire. Everyone will charge in, all Australians look after each other. And of course, we have a highly transmissible virus floating around in the system. Dr McRae, we just heard from the Federal Health Minister who says that the Commonwealth is activating the private hospitals agreement. Will this help the situation in Victoria? Look, it will assist. Bear in mind, many healthcare workers operate between the private and the public system at any rate. There are currently in Victoria several arrangements where uh, elective, advanced, important, urgent elective surgery work is currently being undertaken in the private hospital sector. But this has its own opportunity costs. So those workers who are, say, only in the private sector their businesses are being undermined and compromised. Their ability to look after their patients, who are probably category one, some of them will be, has also been compromised because the public system is being decanted into the private system. 
Now, nobody wants any patient to suffer. Everybody needs to work together. Everybody has to have their shoulders to the mill. And ultimately, the settings are such that that's where we're going. AMA Victoria has been having these conversations for many, many weeks. And while I think it's been a little bit slow to have come to this Code Brown decision, I understand all of the other inputs that need to be uh, taken into consideration. We are there now. And what we need to do is use the opportunity. If there's less work being undertaken uh, related to elective, even if urgent surgery, the primary important thing to do is get a third booster dose of a vaccine into people, particularly over 65 years of age, anybody with any underlying condition. We just heard from the Chief Health Officer in New South Wales that that's the group of people who uh, ultimately have the greatest level of suffering. Every one of those numbers, well, we don't know their names and their particular situation, they are all relatives, their parents, siblings of other people. And it's a horrible environment as we're starting 2022.